I thank you so much for joining me in this conversation about classifying matter. It can help us to understand what we're working with and be able to predict properties. If we can come up with some sort of a classification scheme, and that's what I want to look at in this flow chart is a classification scheme for matter in general. So if I have a beaker full of some substance and I want to understand the substance and predict the properties of its substance, this is some of the thought processes I could go through in order to test, for example, what that substance is. So the first question I might ask is, can this substance be physically separated to get a different part, two or more components. If it can be physically separated, it would be considered a mixture. If it cannot be physically separated, we would consider it to be a pure substance. Now, what do I mean by physical separation? Well, um, if we did filtration, if there was a solid present and we had filter paper, um, what we could see behind is the solid could be left behind on the filter paper and the liquid could run through the filter paper and be captured. And now we could study each of these components of the mixture separately. To evaporate, if it had been evaporation, would mean to take a dish and put a flame under that dish, okay? And we would evaporate, and now this time, we would leave our solid behind on the dish, and what we would get would be a vapor of the liquid moving off of it. Now, another common one with which you should be familiar is distillation. In distillation, we would boil the mixture, and based on differences in boiling point, the temperature of boiling would be the boiling point, we could separate that mixture. And so distillation is another way. But all of these are physically separating. No bonds are being broken and formed as we do this type of a procedure. And so that's what we can do with mixtures. Now, with mixtures, we want to further classify them based on how these, this mixture appears to us. If the mixture appears uniform throughout, so if it would be the same throughout, we would call that homogeneous. Homo meaning same. So homogeneous. Now another word for homogeneous is solution. So those would be considered synonyms. Now I'm going to give you a heads up that later on we will narrow this down in its application to mixtures that are in water. We would call those aqueous mis mixtures, water-based mixtures. But right now we're going to use it in its very broadest sense. So in that application, air is a solution. I'm talking about clean air, not with smog. Um, but air is a solution or a homogeneous mixture of nitrogen, whoops, um, oxygen, water vapor, and more. Okay? And those could all be separated by physical means. Now, if it was not uniform throughout, if I could see particles or if I could see layers separating out, we would call that hetero genius. Okay, a heterogeneous mixture. Now, heterogeneous mixtures are separated even more, so we can separate those further by looking at the size and the behavior of the particles. Now, one of the ways we can tell if it's a heterogeneous mixture is it will be opaque. We will not be able to see through that. 
an example of an opaque mixture is milk. Homogeneous or solutions, in contrast, would be clear. They may have a color. They may be clear blue or clear green or clear and colorless. But clear and opaque are about the degree of transparency. Okay. Now, if it's opaque, like milk, we tend to have smaller particles that are able to stay um, held up in the main solvent. In milk, it's water. And so we would call that a colloid or a colloidal suspension. Right? Now, if we had a mixture like a salad dressing where we have all those spices hanging out and then the oil is going to separate from the, the vinegar, that would be called a simple suspension. Okay. Now, um, if you have a mixture, and I think that this is a really important way to distinguish mixtures, is you would need two or more chemical formulas to represent it. Like if I had um, salt in water, if I wanted to represent that, I would have to write a chemical formula for salt table salt is NaCl and I would have to write a chemical formula for water. Okay? Pure substances on the other hand can be represented symbols have meaning and we have to be very careful how we represent things and these can be represented by one chemical symbol or formula. or formula. Okay, so if I had pure NaCl, I know it's pure because all I have to write is NaCl. I wouldn't have to write anything else. Okay, now there are two types of pure substances. One, we would need more than one element symbol to represent it. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and get us some more space. So we're talking about pure substances and we have compounds and we have elements. A compound requires two or more chem element symbols. So examples, carbon dioxide, two symbols, a symbol for carbon and a symbol for oxygen. An element, on the other hand, just needs one, aluminum, sodium, sulfur. And sulfur is often found in a cluster of eight sulfurs bonded together. This would still be considered an element. There's a single element symbol representing that substance. Now, we can, as chemists, go, we would need a chemical change, not a physical change, in order to convert compounds to elements. This requires breaking bonds. And if you break a bond, that's a chemical change. I'm going to use the symbol delta. You should write down delta means change. You should see that in your notes. Okay, so that's in a flowchart way. Let's just take a quick minute and let's do more of a definition level that will help you study. Okay, a homogeneous mixture is also called a solution. Colloids scatter light. That is the one test that is key for scattering light. 
that is or for for finding colloids, determining if it's a colloid. That's called the Tyndall effect. And if your um, professor or teacher doesn't show that to you, I recommend going on Google and checking out the Tyndall effect. The substance being dissolved in a homogeneous mixture is called the solute. The dissolving medium is called the solvent. Very common in chemistry at this level especially is that water would be your solvent. Liquid solutes, if we're talking about liquid solutes and solvents that are not soluble, they are called immiscible. Just a few vocab words here. If they are, um, if two liquids are soluble, so if I've got two liquids and they are soluble in one another, we would call them miscible. So I like to say if they're mixable, they're miscible. Okay? Now, what if we have solids? We can have mixtures of solids. Most of our jewelry is a mixture of solid, and those are called alloys. And if they're uniform throughout, they're called a solution. Okay? Now, um, we haven't yet talked about covalent. You might have heard about it a little bit in your prior um, classes, but we'll get into more detail of that later. But we often use the phrase like dissolves like. Okay, and what that means is polar solutes will dissolve polar solvents. So alcohol dissolves in water. Um, if, if it is nonpolar, like oil, gasoline dissolves in oil. So like deserves like. Ionic typically will dissolve in polar solvents. Okay, I hope that gives you an introduction into some of the terminology and pr thinking processes, which I think is very important um, as we learn to classify and understand matter, the heart of what we do in chemistry. Thanks for joining me.